I am so glad you're here for another episode of Mechanism Monday. In last week's video, I asked if you could solve the mechanism for this chemical transformation. So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and try it independently. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll give you another mechanism to solve for next week's video. In this very unique reaction, we have a situation where we have this fused cyclic ring and what appears to be happening is we have a migration of a methyl group or a CH2. So notice here we have a CH2 alcohol but on this side, coming off the ring, we only have the alcohol, and instead what we've done is we've taken this fused ring, which was previously six atoms, and turned it into a fused ring that has seven different atoms making up the ring. And something else you should notice of this reaction is at this carbon position, it is attached to two oxygen atoms on either side. And anytime you have a carbon that's attached to two different oxygens, we call that an acetal. So even though the acetal is a part of a fused ring system where you have a six-membered ring and a five-membered ring, that's still an acetal. And since we're introducing an acid, what happens then is that one of these oxygens of this acetal is going to be protonated. In fact, that's the first step where this oxygen will be protonated by the acid to generate water as a byproduct. And once this acetal oxygen has been protonated, what's gonna happen next is it's gonna leave behind a positive charge at that oxygen. And that's gonna make the next step relatively intuitive because anytime you protonate acetals, you make them positively charged. And then the other lone pair of electrons on this oxygen can come down, forming a new carbon to oxygen double bond and actually opening this ring to leave behind a neutral alcohol. So then the product of this transformation is no longer a cyclic ring, but instead just a single ring that is a part of this. So we have our carbon to oxygen double bond newly formed here, but it's still attached on this side. And the rest of the molecule, we have an alcohol here, and we have still another alcohol on this side. So now a similarly reverse step can happen in the next step, except for the the originally liberated alcohol is not the one that's going to come attack this carbon. In fact, a more favorable interaction would happen between this oxygen and this carbon, which is going to open up this ring, and notice that this is now going to end up making a seven-membered ring. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven members of that ring, which is actually how we get our seven-membered ring as a part of this fused ring system, and we're also reforming the bridged portion of our product. So now that we have elongated that ring, what we have is a situation where now we have that piece where we've added that methyl group, and now we have our oxygen here, which is going to allow us to form that seven-membered ring, except for remember this is still going to be protonated, and notice that at position four is where the alcohol is. So if we started counting using the same nomenclature and symbolism, then this is position four, which is where this alcohol is attached, which is how we get our alcohol at that position in our final product. So now all that remains is to deprotonate this, and remember we generated water in the very first step, and that water molecule can come and deprotonate this to give us our final product, which is that seven-membered fused ring with another five-membered ring where we have kind of migrated the location of that CH2. So while this initial transformation may have seemed counterintuitive, all that we've done is recognize that there's an acetal at this position and the traditional acetal protonation mechanism allows us to elongate that seven-membered ring ultimately by following the same type of steps that you would have learned about in your organic chemistry class when you talked about the protecting group acetals. If you enjoyed this week's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up down below. And for next week's video, I'd love to see if you could figure out the mechanism for this chemical transformation. Make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so that you never miss out on another mechanism. I'll see you next Monday.